Well, there's a party and Bobby Hill is <laughs> running it down in Collingwood. Tell us a bit about his contract. Yeah, this is interesting. There was some confusion over um, how long Bobby Hill was actually contracted for. We can tell you it is four years at Collingwood, Bobby Hill, but there's an incredible twist to his contract situation, John, because he's on peanuts. He's on 450 grand a year over the core, or, or, uh, per year for four years. He is one of the biggest cut price superstars in the game at the moment. We saw the two incredible marks at the weekend, the heroic grand final performance, won the Norm Smith mm -hmm. medal, uh, of course. He was absolutely electric on the outside. You would have to say he's one of the best small forwards in the competition, but $450,000 a year is just above the average, really, in the AFL. So what does Collingwood do here, fellas? Do they keep him on this bargain-based contract and then potentially risk a WA club or another club going hard for him with a contract that's... Well, he's probably worth seven or 800. If, if Tyson Stengel is worth uh, 800, Scotty, you broke that story, then Bobby Hill, I believe, is a better player. So does Collingwood um, let it go mm -hmm. and it get, get the great value? Or do they jump now, reward him for his excellent performance yep. and beef up that contract? You need to cuddle him here, Ralphie. I yeah. mean, he, he was best player in the Premiership win. Thank yep. you. He's taken Mark of the Year a couple of times, possibly last week. He needs more than bargain basement, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I think they're open to extending him. I think when Graham Wright, before he left, he had a discussion. He's in between managers right now. There's some machinations with Corporate Sports Australia. There were some rumours around today about him potentially heading home to Perth. I can tell you from people very close to him, he's very upset by that. I think Freo might have even kicked his tyres a couple of months ago. I think mm -hmm. they might have made an offer. He wants to stay, and Graham Wright said, let's get that deal done. That would be very smart. The only thing I would say... so. All those things you say are true. He's exceptional. You're not going to pipe up a hill. He averages, one point, he averages 1.4 goals a game in the last two years. Before that, he averaged 0.8. So all I would say that the word tough of caution... Tough position, John. A tough position. <laughs> he tough can position. be hot or cold. So, you know... Are you when he's hot, he wins him a flag. <laughs> he does. Well, see, the only thing is, Lockie Schultz, he's on five years at well, six to $700,000 yeah. as well. So I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah. All I'm saying to you is that in the seven weeks before those five goals, mm. he kicked nine goals. So you're holding. You're waiting. I'm not holding. I'm extending, but I'm not, not yeah. extending at, at any price. You would think that that contract extension is coming soon, yeah. I, I would have thought. Um, uh, you mentioned the uh, manager machination. So he was with Andrew McDougall, now with uh, Colin Sports Australia. Uh, sorry, Colin Young from Corporate Sports Australia. Yep. We checked with the AFLPA. I don't think he's technically listed <laughs> with yeah, anyone I, at the moment. I think so he's were... within, between <laughs> managers, I reckon in the next week or two we'll know exactly who and then they can move on with an extension. Hey, Scotty, uh, the Bulldogs have been a big story all season. Can you tell us about the contract situation there, particularly around the superstar captain, Marcus Bontempelli, who has been in unbelievable form? Well, the blinkers are on. Bont's got the <laughs> Is on. So mid seasons generally a time where managers and clubs come together, let's have a coffee, what do you think? Mm. The Bont's out of contract at the end of next year, as we know, so is a few others. But the Bont is a, I play football, don't talk to me about anything else. So come to me in October, mm -hmm. we'll talk contracts. So the dog's actually made a call this week to his manager just to check in, mm -hmm. given he's just put on another three Brownlow <laughs> vote performance. But he's happy to keep it going. Now, I don't think he's not going to leave, obviously. But he's still a million dollar a year player, isn't he, Marcus Bonte? He is he at the to... moment. Yeah. So then what's he going to be? That's the question. How much do you have to pay him mm. to reward him? He, he knows he wants premiership. So he understands the Geelong method, the Collingwood method. He wants to lead the way there. But they've got other issues. We know about Tim English. Well, who are the other players? Because they've well, got some other priorities. Ed Richards is out of contract in the next year and yeah. so is Sam Darcy. Let's talk about Ed Richards. Going to get a pay rise. Mm. I mean, it's turned into a mid, Gun. crucial mid. And Sam Darcy's the intriguing one. So you'll have people tell you he's going to be the best player next to Nick Dacos mm. in five years. He looks it. You've got Jamara Eugle Hagen, who you've just given two years to on 800, 900. Mm. He, you, you're sort of investing him being the main dog forward. Hang on. Who's going to be better in five years? You tell me. No, I reckon he can be the best player at this football club, apart from Bontebelli. He can be the best key forward in the league in five years and he can be better than Aaron Norton in two years. Uh, look, he's kicked 22-8 from 11 games this year. That's fine. He's played 18 games of football. I think there's a way in which you keep all of the tools. And yeah. so you, you shed some salary cap room. Hardball with Tim English, 900 grand, take it or leave it. If you want to leave it, that's fine. I think that's fair. Move on Rory Lobb, 550 a year. Uh, you move on Bailey Smith, you yeah, have you to pay him 800. Yeah. Yep. And then you say to Jackson McCray, if you want to go... We will not move you on, but we won't play hardball on a trade. And all of a sudden, you've got two and a half million there. So if you're Sam Power, you don't have to sacrifice the tall. And we can always find midfielders. You keep those star talls. And then Luke Beveridge has those tools as putty in his hands. So what's the price tag? What's the Sam Darcy price tag? What are you paying him? Well, well the problem is, is that he's only three years into a contract. He's got to start with an eight. 
I reckon. Oh, I think it's got to start with a one, really. Oh, well, really? But he's, he's a megastar. Yeah. So but next year, you're going to pay him a million Seven plus. figures. But he, he might kick 50 goals next year. You know what he does? You know all he does? He puts his hands up, he takes forward 50 marks, wow. and he kicks beautifully. That's and that's all you need to do to be a key position forward. Is he worth more than Jamara? Well, that's the question they have to make. Not right now. Potentially. By the end of next year, he will be worth more than Jamari. Wow. His dad's on the boards. That'll be interesting contract (laughs) negotiate. Now, Bont's hot. Yep. Mm -hmm. The Chad is hotter. Talk to me about Chad Warner. It's been amazing to watch, hasn't he? He's been absolutely electric for the Sydney Swans, but there's a big watch on his contract. So we know he's a WA boy, and uh, it does really seem like Fremantle is licking its lips at the prospect of getting Chad Warner. I mean, how do Sydney Swans keep all their uh, superstar midfielders, all their players? Blakey, they've got Mills, they've got Heaney, uh, Goulden and Warner, who could be... He's just Is he the number one player in the game? He's not far off it at the moment. Wow. He's, an abs- he's in absolutely electric form. So Fremantle, right, they've got three first round picks <laughs> in this year's draft. So what they could do, and you've got to keep an eye on this at trade time, if they trade their current picks, one or two or potentially even three, probably two, into next year's draft, that gives them the war chest of picks, at least potentially two first round draft picks to go to Sydney, pay Warner $1.5 million, $1.6 million a year, satisfy Sydney with two first round picks and he gets to come home. So I think we will, we will see them flag their intentions in this year's trade period whether they shuffle back at least one or potentially two of those picks. How's the salary cap going to look? You've got <laughs> Sean Darcy yep. on a poultice. Yep. You've got two Ruckman mm-hmm. taking up most of the Luke Jackson. 900 Mo- each, yep. And then you put a third midfielder on a poultice as well. I think they can how, accommodate how? it. That's a very big cake. And they've got uh, Brayshaw out as a free agent as well. The salary cap is uplifted. What is it, 29%, yep. John? So clubs do have more space. We've got to get our heads around this. They can be aggressive. They do have space. You wow. talk about uh, tight salary caps. How does Sydney afford them? So it will really depend. We know Chad Warner loves the football club. We are absolutely clear on mm-hmm. that. But will the will the homesickness be a factor? Will the pull of home going back to WA uh, potentially dangle that carrot? Because Fremantle, with all these picks, uh, can do the deal. He'd be insane to leave. Nothing trumps the folding stuff. We all love the yeah. folding stuff. <laughs> but the lure of premierships, he should be saying to himself at 23, yep. I could yeah. win three premierships in the next eight years. And so, yes, I'll be well paid. No way am I leaving no. the Sydney Football Club. Now, Tyson Stengel of... has already won a premiership. <laughs> of course, has. you know, you set the competition alight by your discussion on him uh, last yep. week. Dropped a bomb. Where are we at after that little bombshell? <laughs> well, Geelong's offer, we understand, is four years at 700. Mm-hmm. Now, last week we spoke about how there's 800, 850 out there potentially for him from rivals. Massive. Essendon and St Kilda were the ones we spoke about. Now... With you, as you know, Sarah Cap, 100 grand in this day and age, net tax, it's actually not that much in the end. Yep. Would you leave if it's $100,000 difference or would you stay? It's not a lot, is it? The point I would make about it is, and especially after tax, but he's been on rookie wages his whole career, Rich, so he's, he hasn't made any money from his football career yet. So if this is his payday and he's used to changing clubs, I know, and he doesn't love the lifestyle potentially mm. or as much. I think you got to. I think it's it's totally fine. I think yeah. it's okay. He's been on, yep. you know, no money his whole career. If I was Essendon or St Kilda, and it was about years, I'd say I'll give you six years. I mean, Essendon just gave Ben Mackay six years. Yeah. Um, you know, so all of a sudden you're saying yes, it's 150 a year, but we're giving you two and a half million well, guaranteed cash. Unrestricted free agency is double-edged sword. So Geelong got him for absolutely nothing, and now they're going to have to pay up. I'll ask you the question, Scotty. So if Max Holmes had left. Chris Scott would have had words <laughs> with his list boss in Andrew Mackey. Would he be as upset if Tyson Stengel left? Not as upset. And as you'll see here, Tom Hawkins last night at the Hall of Fame was asked that very question, Ralphie. Um, I think it's really important when you're in a career for such a short period of time um, to, to be paid generally, um, you know, what you're worth. And sometimes when you're in really strong systems, that may be just slightly under. Both parties have been great for each other. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, a football a football lover out there can can see that. Um, you know, I, I would hope that he he, he would stay, um, but I don't know the intricacies of, of what's happening behind the scenes. So Brian there's Tom Lee. Hawkins. I'm reading that, Jay. You're good at this. He is saying. The guy needs a big contract. He deserves <laughs> it. He helped us win a flag. I love the kid. Yep. 
But, mate, I'm in. If you go and get your money to yeah. set up your life, yeah. we support you. He sounded quite sympathetic to his situation. He did. Well, how would Ryan Myers feel if he got 850000 all of a sudden? He could rightfully ask a question, because his last two years have been out of the blocks. Mm. Brad Close plays a very similar role. So, I think Tomahawk's going... We love you, yeah. but if you have to go, we understand. And the Cats don't overpay. They've got a structured yep. pay model, don't they? They don't go overs for players, even, even when other uh, clubs come for them. They kept Max Holmes. 